Now, the first thing I want to say is that it's absolutely mind blowing to be standing under a vehicle on a hoist and have absolutely nothing for the floor structure. I've come from a background of benchmarking vehicles where you'd have hundreds of stamp parts for the for the where this front mega giga casting is, hundreds and hundreds of parts in the back. And the level of refinement and integration is incredible. The Monroe and Associates team recently took delivery of a made in Texas Tesla Model Y with the 4680 batteries and also the structural battery pack. And they are in the process of tearing it down and analyzing the amazing improvements that Tesla has made over the previous version that had 2170 cells. I'm really excited because the Monroe team has reached the stage of the teardown process when they're actually getting into all the details about the structural battery pack. And also they're going to be getting into how these 4680 batteries are laid out in the structural battery pack. And in a recent video on the Monroe Live YouTube channel, Corey and Julian from the Monroe team um, show what the structural battery pack looks like when it's separated from the Tesla Model Y. And on that note, in this video, I'm gonna dive into some highlights and react to this video. But on top of that, I'm also gonna talk about other innovations that Tesla has made over the years when it comes to manufacturing um, electric vehicles and talk about how Tesla has really made a big shift and revolutionized the auto industry. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Since the early days, Tesla has been an innovator, even way back in the original Roadster days. For instance, back in 2008, when the Tesla, the original Tesla Roadster first began shipping to customers, this became the first production vehicle to use lithium ion batteries. Then of course, you have the Tesla Model S in 2012, which was a little bit more of a mass production vehicle. And, uh, Tesla was the first, as far as I know, to actually have a production electric vehicle with a flat skateboard chassis. Um, and it was with their Model S, which was a complete from the ground up electric vehicle. And other companies are just now starting to catch up with that flat skateboard design, like for instance, the GM Ultium platform, Hyundai and Kia's E GMP platform, and also the VW MEB platform. Then of course, if you move to 2016, when Tesla officially had the grand opening of their Gigafactory, their battery factory, in Nevada, the joint partnership between Tesla and Panasonic where they manufacture 2170 batteries. Around that time, a lot of people were thinking that this was a mistake by Tesla and they were investing too much money and time into a battery factory uh, before they really even had a mass market vehicle. Of course, the 2170 batteries are what Tesla used uh, to power the Model 3, which uh, of course was a big success and continues to be a big success, and the Model Y as well. Um, which we're going to be talking about version two of the Model Y that uses the new 4680 battery cells. But Tesla still sells a great version with the 2170 cells. Um, and those vehicles are very popular. And it was very smart of Tesla to build this factory so they would have control, a little bit more control over the battery supply and have these great batteries for their vehicles. In the same way that the other automakers have copied Tesla on past things, um, there are a lot of automakers right now that are partnering with battery manufacturers, and they're now building their own battery factories. Um, a little bit late, but I'm glad to see it happening. And once again, Tesla paved the way and was really the pioneer in that regard. Now we shift here to 2022, and we actually have the Model Y 2.0 with the structural battery pack and 4680 batteries. We actually have this vehicle, this Model Y, in customers' hands. This Model Y, of course, is quite an innovation, not only because of the structural battery pack and the batteries in it, but also because of the front and rear giga castings, which massively simplify um, the manufacturing process of this vehicle. Not too long after Tesla started talking about the structural battery pack and these gigafactory castings, of course, other companies started working to develop this and put this into their products as well. For instance, even Volkswagen is working on some kind of giga casting for a future EV product. I've even seen talks of other companies talking about structural battery packs as well. Once again, Tesla is moving the EV industry forward with these manufacturing innovations. Now, with that being said, I wanna dive now and react to and show some highlights from the Monroe Live YouTube channel. I did wanna say a special thank you to Corey Steuben and the Monroe & Associates team for allowing me to use these video clips from their YouTube channel. 
If you're not yet subscribed to the Monroe Live YouTube channel, I definitely recommend that you do because Sandy and the Monroe team, um, they do a lot of great teardowns of not only Tesla vehicles, but other vehicles as well. And they have a lot of great insight um, and they put out great content that you don't want to miss. I'll make sure that I put a link to the Monroe Live YouTube channel and also to this video that I'm going to be showing some highlights and clips from. And I definitely recommend that you go over and watch this full video because I'm only going to cover part of what they talk about in this video. With that being said, let's dive into one of the first highlight clips that I want to show from this Monroe Life YouTube video, starting with Corey talking about what it was like when they dropped the Model Y structural battery pack out of the vehicle. When we dropped this from the car. It drew a crowd of roughly 30 to 40 people at Monroe. It is something that we haven't seen really ever. And today we're going to walk through what we've already found that we didn't already uncover when Sandy and I went to the Giga Texas factory about two or three months ago. Um, so first of all, it is just phenomenal that these seats are mounted to this battery pack and we were able to drop it from the car. Also, there's a lot of features with the carpet and the wiring and the routing that made this possible. And uh, we're gonna hop off and kind of walk through that. I wanna make sure that you don't underestimate the amount of engineering that it took from the Tesla team to make this possible. Um, as Corey mentioned, this is not something they've seen before, obviously because Tesla is the first to do this. Um, anytime you, that you're the first, especially with a, a big product like a vehicle, to do something major like this, uh, a major revolution in manufacturing, there's a lot of engineering that goes into that. And we'll talk more about the, the specifics, uh, the bolts and how they connected it and some of the ways that they integrated this, but it's just incredible. Don't underestimate once again, the amount of engineering that it took to make this happen. And to see this actually become a reality is incredible. Next, I just wanna comment quickly on this close-up shot that they took of the battery pack label. Do note that this vehicle, this Model Y that they're tearing down, the VIN number shows that it's the 2282nd Model Y that was produced at the Giga Texas facility. And this label also shows the date of May 25th, 2022 on this battery pack. This next clip is really interesting and apparently Corey lost a bet to Sandy. So this guarantees that I do indeed owe Sandy a steak dinner because when, when we first saw these seats on the pack, I said, no way they're gonna mount the seats in the carpet in the center console and then shove it up in the car. There you go, Sandy Monroe, I owe you a dinner. Once again, this is pretty incredible to see these seats uh, attached to the battery pack, um, the, the carpet and the center console and to see how that could go right up into the vehicle. It's a pretty incredible process and I know others are going to copy this. In this next clip, Julian Aitz from the Monroe team talks about um, how the structural battery pack is connected to the Model Y, the rest of the Model Y frame. Uh, so uh, from a removal standpoint, this was uh, pretty straightforward. There were very few bolts uh, inside the vehicle that needed to be removed to drop the pack. Uh, primarily, uh, as you can see here, uh, we were dealing with uh, mainly bolts around the perimeter. There were 38 total that were uh, holding the pack to uh, the body itself. Uh, you can see a few of them here. Um, some of them were a little bit deeper uh, inside, um, so they were a little bit harder to reach, but still it was uh, pretty straightforward removal. Uh, we then had them running uh, along uh, the edges and uh, toward the rear of the battery pack. In a little bit, I'll play a clip of Julian Aitz talking uh, really about how it relates to the assembly process. Obviously, they're disassembling the Model Y, and they're talking about how easy it was to do that. Um, but basically, what I gather from this is, um, if it's really easy to disassemble, and it's pretty straightforward and easy to disassemble this, I just imagine that the assembly process for Tesla is also quite simple. So that's what I got from this clip. Since there were a limited number of bolts and a lot of them were on the outside of the vehicle, it seems like uh, actually installing this structural battery pack into the Model Y frame is pretty straightforward and easy on the manufacturing end. Now, as a follow-up to that, here's a clip of Julian Aitz showing the incredible uh, sliding center console, how that slides, not when it's actually installed, it doesn't slide once it's installed in the vehicle, but how it slides into place during the assembly process. Uh, in order to make it easier to deck this, once the battery is installed, the center console is slid forward on rails to engage with the instrument panel. 
And you can see there then that those two bolt uh, interfaces now are engaging with a bracket that's on the battery pack itself. So that'll hold the center console in place. You then put a piece of trim over it snaps right in place and that's all set to go. Once again, like some of the other things that we've shown, um, just viewing it from this angle and just seeing it, it seems like a very simple thing, but this makes the manufacturing process so much more simple. You don't have to lift a part in, a robot doesn't have to lift a part in and try to line it up. It literally, either a human or a robot can just push that piece forward, put in the two bolts, uh, snap on the panel as I mentioned, and then that center console is connected pretty incredible that process and once again don't underestimate the engineering that went in to make this possible. This next clip is my favorite from the entire video and it's when Corey goes underneath the Model Y and talks about the innovations under this new Tesla Model Y 2.0. Now the first thing I want to say is that it's absolutely mind-blowing to be standing under a vehicle on a hoist and have absolutely nothing for the floor structure. Um, at Monroe and Associates, we've seen the evolution of the automotive industry for the past 30 to 40 years. Myself, with 17 years at Monroe and Associates, I've come from a background of benchmarking vehicles where you'd have hundreds of stamp parts for the for the for where this front mega giga casting is, hundreds and hundreds of parts in the back. And the level of refinement and integration is incredible. As Corey mentions, the Monroe team has seen a lot of different designs over the years. It sounds like they've been around for 30 or 40 years. He mentioned that number. And he mentioned that he's been with Monroe and Associates for around 17 years. He's definitely seen a lot of innovations in manufacturing. But this still amazes him, this process, and how Tesla is able to integrate so much into these giga castings. It really is pretty impressive. This next clip from the video is really a key clip because they talk about the actual weight of the structural battery pack with the seats and everything installed. I believe this weighed 1,200 pounds. Do you know the exact weight, Julian? Uh, yeah, it was uh, 1,198 pounds. Okay. That's with everything you see here. Everything we see here. Which yep. is incredible because a couple of the other EVs we have in this building, we have a Rivian over here, we have three or four other EVs we can't talk about. The batteries will weigh twice that just the batteries, no seat, no carpet, no trim. So this whole assembly with the seats and everything weighs a little bit under 1200 pounds and uh, Corey and Julian seemed impressed by this. Now, um, it appears like based on EPA documents that the size of this battery pack is around 69 kilowatt hours, somewhere around that for the standard range all wheel drive Model Y. We obviously don't know enough yet to calculate the pack level energy density, um, but just as an example to kind of uh, play a little game with math here. 1,198 pounds is equivalent to 543.4 kilograms. And if all the extra components on top of the structural battery pack, for instance, weigh around 163 kilograms or around 360 pounds or so, that would mean the energy density of the pack could potentially be somewhere around 180 watt hours per kilogram. Obviously, we don't know how much the seat and the rest of the structure there weighs, the center console carpet and all that together, um, but it's going to be interesting to see what that pack weighs without all of that so we can get a little bit more of an idea what the what the um, energy density at the pack level is for this new structural battery pack. Here's the last clip that I wanna play and I thought this was important because this is Julian Eights kind of giving his summary, his first initial thoughts on the structural battery pack and how it's integrated. Overall, uh, it was um, uh, much more straightforward than I was expecting. Uh, I think it was, uh, especially when we had it removed and took a look at uh, how it could lift back up into the vehicle, seeing what the assembly process may look like. Uh, I, I think it's incredibly well done. Um, there are uh, a lot of considerations here just in terms of uh, ease of assembly uh, that I, I think were uh, achieved very well. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's inside the battery pack itself. Do remember that the Monroe team, as Corey pointed out in this video, they previously uh, did a teardown of the Model Y, the Model Y in 2020 with a 2170 battery pack. And so they're going to have the ability to side by side compare this new Model Y 2.0 to the previous version and really talk about the differences. So if you're not yet subscribed to the Monroe Live YouTube channel, I definitely recommend that you do if you're interested in seeing uh, more teardowns of this Model Y and see more comparisons between the 2170 equipped Model Y and the 4680 equipped Model Y with a structural battery pack. So once again, to wrap all this up, once again, thank you to the Monroe team for allowing me to use these video clips. And I don't know about you, but after watching this, 
I'm really excited to see the rest of this process and I'm really impressed at the integration and how Tesla was able to integrate the structural battery pack into an existing vehicle, a vehicle that already exists on the market and they were able to adjust and change some things and make a structural battery pack go into that vehicle in such a great seamless way. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this teardown. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.